Okay, so what you see in the vise is called an ice dub caddis. Uh, this is actually a super simple bug to tie. Uh, I'm going to go over this uh, fly in detail though, uh, and how you can. I'll show you some tricks on how you can mass produce these things. So you could use regular dubbing too, uh, or nymph dubbing or whatever. But uh, ice dubbing seems to be kind of tricky for people, and this is a great way to learn ice dub. So I'm going to get this guy out the vise, and the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of move everything to the side. What I have here is a little card that I made. It's a, it's, this is to show how much dubbing I'm gonna use, okay? So the center line represents basically my thread and how much dubbing I need coming off either side for the body. Uh, so this top part's the body, this bottom part is the thorax, and uh, one inch is the dimension from this bottom line to the tip, uh, a quarter inch, uh, uh, long from this top line to this bottom line is the distance down further and then a quarter inch is the uh, distance of the bottom line so that'll kind of give you the uh, dimensions if you want to kind of make one for yourself it is for a size uh, 14 hook we're going to use this on a times two short you can use this uh, basically up to a times one long uh, and it's not it's just not the final guide right <laughs> it's a gauge uh, and I'll show you how to use that real quick. So the uh, the body materials that we're going to be using is ice dub. In this case, so I've got olive ice dub here, and I've got uh, uh, peacock black ice dub. And th that can be kind of difficult to use out of um, out of those big bags. So what I've done is I've taken those and I've put them in smaller. Uh, like bead bags that, uh, or craft bags that you can get at Hobby Lobby. They're not very big. They're about an inch wide by two inches tall. And uh, so what I want to do, and I cut the corner on them. Oh, sorry. I cut the corner off of one, one corner so I can kind of pull some out. And what I want to do is I'm just going to kind of line this up with the corner, and I'm just going to start lining and pulling. I have to work some out there. Sorry, it's a little difficult to do with all this stuff in the way. You can kind of force feed it into that corner. There you go, and you grab a portion. And, there we go. Sorry, and pull it. Uh, and so what I'm looking to do is get it to fit inside this perimeter. Uh, it's just a good way to make sure you're not over pulling dubbing or whatever. So now I've got it about like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the card, and I'm going to I'm going to start at the top, and I'm just going to gently twist, just very lightly. I'm not looking to build a rope or anything yet. I'm just trying to get it to somewhat stick together so that I can put it back on that card and see. By the way, it's also much much easier if you do this with it, uh, you know, down instead of up in the air like I'm doing here. So the goal is is to get it to fit inside those lines are pretty close okay and then once I have what I need or about what I need I need just a little bit more at the bottom pinch and pull set that aside once I have about what I need there and come with my scissors and I'm going to trim sorry I know I keep going out of camera I'm going to trim on that bottom bottom line And then just kind of gently twist that together so I have something about like this. I'll set that aside. Next, I want to do the same thing to fill this gap here, which is going to be the thorax, since I'm prepping the material. I want to take uh, just a little bit of ice stub, uh, same kind of principle, I pull it out of the corner. And I'm going to kind of fold it over on top of itself, pick and pull, pick and pull, until I have something that's about that dimension. And uh, I'll fold it over, pull it apart, set it on top of itself. Uh, and then I can kind of take my card and just basically use it as a gauge, right? Is it, does it basically fill that space? And it does. So uh, the density uh, is kind of up to you on how dense you want this bug to be. Uh, the more material you have to fit in that space, the more it's gonna be. Personally, I like to be able to see 
uh, the lines through there. It kind of lets me know that I'm in the right ballpark. Uh, and again, that's just, that's just kind of a gauge uh, to help with how much dubbing you're going to need. So the hook I have in the vise is, there it is. It's a Lightning Strike SE1, size 14. It's got a merger hook. The thread that I'm going to be using is uh, Viva's 30 denier GSP. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thread and run it through my wax a couple of times just to make sure I've got some grip. Uh, GSP is very slick. I'm going to start my thread about a bodkin and a half, two bodkin widths behind the eye, and start wrapping that to the back until I get to the hook point. And I'm going to trim that out. I'm going to continue wrapping to the back about a bodkin width behind the barb. So if I take my thread and let it hang basically straight down and put my bodkin there, I've got about about that distance behind there. Okay, next I'm going to spiral wrap my thread forward to where I started. And I'm going to add the rib. Uh, what I'm going to use for the rib is Vivas monofilament. It's a uh, 0.10 millimeter. You can use a uh, 2.0 millimeter, or uh, sorry, 0 0.20 millimeter. Uh, you just want to get off uh, enough that you can handle. Uh, typically, I take uh, about nine inches or so. It lets me to do like two or three flies at a time uh, and easily handle the, the rib on this. So I'm just going to tie that thread in on the side. I'm going to put three or four wraps in. And I'm just going to pull until the monofilament is tucked in underneath my thread. I'm going to wrap that back to about the hook point. And I'm going to bring in a Sharpie and I'm going to color my rib. Just black. You can do different colors if you're, you know, doing different body colors or what, you know, what whatever it is you want to do. I'm just using black. I'm going to take my uh, clip and put that to the back and now I'm going to wrap this guy back down to where we stopped. I'm going to turn my thread, I'm sorry, I'm going to turn my vise over to expose my thread and I'm going to use a split thread technique on this to open up my thread. Uh, if you need to, you can go back and forth with your bodkin to kind of open it up. You can also draw and lift up to get it to twist out. Uh, I find that if you just keep your, as you're wrapping your thread back, if you work on keeping it uh, open, then you don't have to mess with all that. I need about two inches uh, in the split thread. I'm just going to wax this up front here. And now I can add my ice stub. I'm just going to put it right between the two threads. I'm going to close it. Now, you can kind of see how it's already pre-tapered here, which is just what we want. I'm going to twist it just a little bit. I don't want to go too much, but I want to get that twisting started. Whichever way you're twisting your fingers, you want to twist your thread, right? So I'm twisting, I guess, to the, uh, I'm using, I'm pulling my thumb to the right when I do that. So I'm going to spin my thread to the right. Okay, I want to pinch up just below where the dubbing is, ends, and I'm going to spin my thread off the bobbin and let it hang. You don't want to do this too much because uh, it can snap your thread, but you do want to do it enough to where it uh, starts to put that twist in your thread so that it starts to do that naturally. And you can kind of twist it on, pinch, 
spin. And you can just kind of finish putting it on. So this, that's actually a real easy way to get a uh, pre-tapered body with a, a coarse, non-friendly dubbing like uh, ice dub. And then I'm just gonna start to wrap it forward. Since it is pre-tapered, it's gonna just, well, at least it should, just start building the taper of the fly. And if you need to give it a twist every time you come around, that's no big deal. I'm gonna to get to the front, and because uh, I'm using 30, 30 denier GSP, it, 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 is, it gets more fragile as you spin it up. So when I get to the front here, and it can snap if you're not careful right here. So I'm gonna take a, my whip finisher, I'm gonna put in about a four or five turn whip finish right there, just to make sure that it, it holds. Uh, so that way if my thread does snap, uh, I'm still covered. I'm gonna kind of grab everything here and pull all this stuff up. And I can take my fingers and just kind of pinch it off. You don't, you don't want to get crazy here because you're. Uh, we're gonna counter wrap this now, or we're gonna rib it. And I like to do the back pretty tight and as I work forward I kind of loosen up on my grip just a little bit uh, to help give the presence of a bigger body going forward and we want to get four or five six turns in here now when I get up to the front I'm going to bring that monofilament to the front side of my thread and I just cross over a couple times and that's captured. I'm going to bring it down to oh, about a half bodkin width behind the eye. I'm going to reverse it and tie it in going back to basically where we started our thread, about a bodkin, bodkin and a half width behind the eye. And I can trim this guy out. Next, I'm going to put a drop of glue in right on top. I'm going to add a few wraps to that just to help make sure it's secured. And uh, this is a good time if you want to trim anything out uh, or groom it to whatever degree. I mean, if you like it super shaggy, you may not need to. If you want it to be a little more of a tight body, uh, that's cool too. Uh, it really just kind of depends on the waters you're fishing. You know, I mean, if you're fishing tail water you probably want this thing super tight um, if you're not and it's not pressured water uh, loose may be a little bit better I mean it's 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 hard to say just by shooting a video right so <laughs> all right so next what we're gonna do <coughs> excuse me is we're gonna put in a dubbing loop and we don't need a super big one but I'm gonna pull out about eight inches worth of thread I'm gonna make my dubbing loop and wrap forward. Yep. I'm gonna, I like waxing my thread while my fingers are still holding it open. I'm gonna insert my dubbing spinner. This is just a uh, weighted dubbing spinner. It's brass on the bottom, so it gets a lot of nice spin. I'm gonna turn my vise to the side. And now I'm gonna get my pre portion material. I'm going to slide it right on up to the front. And so what we're looking to have here is I know the sides are kind of wild but you're looking to have something that's about, I can't quite get that card in there, but it's about this length right over here where my thumb is. So here's the end of my body. I might turn it to the side maybe a little bit better. So you can kind of see how that fits in there, like so. Okay, so this it's again, this is just a gauge. Uh, now you can leave all of this in there as is. Uh, it's gonna build up super thick on you very quick. I like to come in with my scissors and now trim out the sides. 
to better represent that let's see if I can twist it back there we go to kind of better represent that gap off this little gauge so that it's oh, there we go pretty close to that I'm going to slide this up right to the hook shank and again I'm going to pinch right at the dubbing I'm going to take this I'm going to spin the twister just like so I'm going to move it down I can't get everything in with all this camera stuff in my way I'm going to spin it let the dubbing spinner do the work I'm going to let go and it's going to twist it all up I'm going to do it one more time twist it all up so you should have uh, a little bit of a shaggy shagginess dubbing mix right there uh, the best way I found to kind of tackle this now is bring in a good solid pair of hackle pliers I'm going to pinch it on the thread an inch or so away from the bait uh, from the the base part of the dubbing right here or I get the top part this would be the base this would be the top part of the dubbing I'm going to trim out my thread <coughs> off the dubbing spinner so I just have this and next I'm going to start palmering this forward and each time I make a wrap I'm going to draw that hackle or dub I guess to the back until I get up front to my thread We're pretty close now when I get right to the end I'm gonna cross I'm gonna cross the threads Oop, I gotta do that a little bit faster for it to hold in place but I'm gonna bring the thread that's holding off the dubbing loop that's holding all this hackle or this uh, hackle I keep calling it a hackle uh, dubbing in place I'm gonna cross that to the front side of my thread put a couple wraps in I'll just pull it to the back and I'll put one wrap in and that whole thing is now totally locked in you can see I've got no weight on that whatsoever I'm gonna actually remove it take my fingers pull everything rearward and with each wrap I'm just gonna keep drawing everything to the back They take four or five wraps to get it there, but then you should have something that looks about like that. Come in with your scissors. And you trim that out. Next, I'm going to go back to my Sharpie. I'm going to color this thread again for the head. And one thing I like to do here is I kind of like to double up on the glue because all this material is super slick. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put, I'll put, I'll mark it with the Sharpie. I'll come in pretty close. I'll put a, a decent drop of glue on if I can get it to come off. There we go. And kind of let it roll down or work its way down right into the head and the thorax area. If it wants to go, there it goes. I'll put two or three turns in there. I'm going to come in with my whip finisher and just whip finish this. Uh, five or six turns. Now I'm going to take it. Now when I, when I pull my th whip finisher out, I want my thread to the back and I'm going to pull. I'm literally, you can see I'm pulling all that thread to the back now what that's going to do is especially if you overcrowd your eye right there it's going to start to suck everything to the back that's why using this 30 denier is super good on something like this i'm going to trim out the thread i'm going to just run my finger <coughs> excuse me across the back to get that to stand up like so i'm just going to bring my scissors in and trim it off the back so that my leg portions are hanging down and to finish it off 
I'm gonna go back to my super glue and just dab a little right on the top and then right on the front part of that thorax there uh, and let that just kind of soak in for a second. Uh, you can take your thumb and kind of push it in there. And it allows that super glue to soak into that thorax and really come down. So it helps build a durable bug. So there you go. Uh, it's a long explanation for a super simple fly. Uh, but hopefully you were able to pick up a couple techniques there that uh, make this uh, using ice dub uh, much more, much easier right because i step can be a real pain for a lot of people to use so these are a couple of uh techniques that i use that uh help me cross some hurdles on that and um, so anyway hope you enjoyed it uh if you did please give the video a thumbs up always love a thumbs up uh if you're finding this video and you're not a member of our fly tying group uh, it's fly tying for beginners over at facebook feel free to join uh, this is one of the videos that we do that uh, come out with the classes uh, that we do periodically and so uh, this just happens to be video one for our uh, current dubbing session uh, people that were struggling with different kinds of dubbing so uh, hopefully you were able to pick up a few things there on that one and uh, use those in the future on some of your other ties uh, that said happy tying everybody and we'll see you next time